Well, thank you guys for joining us uh, for our second session. We actually have Jill um, Scarborough here from Tableau Software. Why don't you give a round of applause for her for being here today. <laughs> Hopefully you guys aren't too tired. Who's, who's tired from the last two days or energized? Hopefully you're both energized and tired that we wore you out with like the best content you could get in customer success. Uh, my name is Dewey. I'm with Tatango, and uh, thank you so much for attending the you know last two days. Some of you guys have been here, um, you know, every year that we've had this uh, conference, and really excited to see what you know how this um, you know this event impacts your business. So um, this next session is actually going to be on running a reoccurring revenue business at 94% retention rate. So I'm really stoked to, to kind of introduce you and, and hear what she's got to say. So we're gonna have some questions at the end of her uh, session, so stay tuned um, and let's get going. Thank you. How's everybody doing today? Oh, nice. So a little bit about me. My name is Jill Scarborough. I'm gonna talk to you about my journey at Tableau about over the last mm, four years now. So you'll find me located up in Seattle, Washington Anytime I'm not at the office, I'm out doing something ill-advised in the great Pacific Northwest um, and work for a company called Tableau Software. And what we do is really help people see and understand data. So joined Tableau about four years ago. Um, and at that time, there were nine customer success managers globally. Um, I was among those. Fast forward four years later, um, there are about 65 of us. And I'm overseeing a team um, in North America of about 38 of them. So before customer success, so customer success came to Tableau about five years ago. And at that point, we were a large enough revenue stream where they said, OK, our sales managers, they're getting pulled all over the place. We need to have a team dedicated to making sure that we're collecting this maintenance renewal revenue. So thus, the customer success team was formed. Um, there were two main challenges that I'm going to talk about today um, and how we've handled those and some learnings, hopefully, that you guys can take away and um, put into practice. So the first one is moving from reactive to proactive. Um, as I mentioned, we were formed basically because the renewal revenue was large enough. Um, there are kind of two main problems with that. It was not necessarily, let's think about how we can help our customers. It was, we need this team to oversee the renewal revenue. So part of our challenge has been, all right, how do we change the perception of our company around, all right, let's truly build out a customer journey and make sure our customers are onboarded and taken care of throughout the year. And then also, we've gone through um, some pretty large growth. So how do you scale a team from nine up to 65 plus in a matter of four years? So before I get started, I want you to think about your favorite restaurant. For me, this is a brew pub around the corner from my house. Um, go there probably more frequently than I should. Uh, whenever I walk in, they know me by name. They're able to give me recommendations of what I would like. Um, whenever I have people in town, this is always the go-to place. Whenever I don't feel like I'm making a decision, this is where I go. Um, this is actually what I think about our customer success team is doing. They create a sense of community with our customers. They know our customers. They listen. They prescribe exactly what they need. Um, and it's really about not just um, coming and dealing with Tableau as a vendor, but rather creating an experience that our customers will want to go tell other people about. So how do we do this? First, there is a need. Customer comes to us. Um, they say, I have a problem. We sell the software. Um, what if you were to buy a piece of IKEA furniture? It's shipped to you with 5,000 pieces. There are no instructions. Um, I don't know how many of you are as clever as I thought I was and decided I don't need those instructions. Um, not a good idea. Ended up having to take it all apart and then doing it again. So what if we were just to sell our software and then say, all right, you're on your own? Um, not the best tactic. So what we do within the first 10 days is handhold our customers, saying here are all the resources that you're going to need over the course of the year. Um, here are some best practices around our customers that have been able to do this very well. Um, just an introduction and really getting it off on the right foot around building a sense of community. Next, 90 days, make sure they have installed. So a key point around this, the reason that we do the touch points at 1 to 10 days and 90 days is this is what our data tells us. 
Um, so the main reason that we were losing our customers is because they weren't installing the software or the champion that was actually sponsoring the project was being pulled in another direction. So it's really important for us that we stay in touch with the customer within the first 90 days because that's when the majority of our attrition was happening. Next, we'll touch base at the six month mark and really that's just to make sure they are receiving value. And then again, 90 days prior to expiration. What I will point out um, about the customer engagement model is Tableau's business is a little bit different than a lot of organizations here as only a small sliver right now of ours is SaaS based. So we are traditionally on premise so we don't have the luxury of being able to see a lot of the analytics behind usage. Therefore we do have to rely on a good deal of live conversations with the customers to really understand what's going on. So that brings us to my next point. Um, when you're growing so quickly, how do you take care of all of these customers? So currently, um, this is how we do it. Um, if there is one learning that I hope you take away, it's always be thinking about forward looking where your customers are going and how you can segment them. Um, I think we got a little bit late to the game on this and wish we would have looked at it a little bit earlier. But what we have at the bottom is Customer Renewal Manager and they're really dealing with our small transactional landed accounts. Those are gonna be the accounts that have less than five licenses. And what we do here is one outbound phone call and then the collections for the renewal. Um, we also have heavy automation in this space and so doing drip campaigns um, in regards to a lot of our documentation that says here are some best practices, here's how you build a visualization. Um, the reason that we target those customers is a lot of the standard out of the box on demand videos are great for them. Um, they're not necessarily complex accounts, so there is a lot of self-service that can really help them get off the ground. Next, we have our, our SaaS customers. Um, we do have a dedicated team for those. Um, they do fall a lot more of the traditional model as far as doing a lot of predictive analytics as far as the usage of the customers and targeting our um, hot accounts that way. Then in the middle, we have our larger deployments, both commercial and enterprise. Um, we divide these up just because of the complexity of the account. Um, commercial ones are more of our SMB, SME, and then our enterprise are more of our Fortune 500. And then at the very top, we have the strategic customers. So our strategic customers actually have an overlay between a customer success manager and a customer advocacy manager. So this is where a good deal of our revenue does come from, and it's those really large deployments. And so we have a customer advocacy manager who's dedicated to 10 accounts, and they're doing a lot, a lot of on-site visits and really working at that executive level. So I mentioned at the beginning, one of our main challenges was turning around the perception of the organization around, all right, we're not just here to collect renewals, but we're here to actually help manage the cycle so it is a secured maintenance revenue stream at the end. And one of the ways that we've had a lot of success doing this is what we call sales influence. Essentially, that's just looking for upsell opportunities. Um, so in our um, environment, there is always a sales manager involved and then the customer success manager is an overlay. So we work as a team in these accounts. Um, I think it's very important that we are targeted on two different numbers, sales, strictly the expansion, customer success, strictly um, the renewal revenue. However, we do run competitions on a quarterly basis for the customer success manager that uncovers the most leads. Um, and this is really to help tighter teaming to make sure in these conversations with our customers, we are still having those value-based conversations and that we can still look for upsell opportunities without putting a targeted number on it. So our lessons around this is proactivity is key um, and that's not just telling it to everyone in this room because you're here at a customer success conference, um, but it's making sure everyone in your organization knows that and you tell them again and again and you um, share your successes with them. Develop an engagement model that really helps the customers get value quickly at the start. We have found for us that it's within the first 90 days. Um, within that first 90 days is when the attrition happens or they're really successful and they're more likely to add on and expand later. And then customer segmentation, one size does not fit all. Um, that is something that I wish we would have looked at earlier, um, but always look about where your customers are going to make sure that you do have the framework in for scalability. 
So challenge number two that I mentioned is CSM hiring and ramping. So we went from nine up till 60 plus. Um, so a challenge was to make sure that we have the right skill set, to make sure that we are getting people in the seats and getting them um, having the right conversations with the customers as soon as possible. And then also that we're making it a positive career path so they are sticking around for a pretty long time. Um, something that is crucial for our ramping is having mentors, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but we need to make sure to have mentors that the career path is long enough for a customer success manager that the experienced ones can take a new customer success manager under their wing. So what do we do as far as the profile and hiring? Um, strongly encourage any sort of behavioral interviewing. It is far more effective than really just talking through previous experiences. Um, something that everyone has to do before joining our company is a product demo during the interview process. Um, there are two good parts of this. One, as an interviewer, you know the person is invested enough to put in the time to learn your product. Um, and then also you can understand how they will deal with answering questions on the, fr on the fly and then also the technical aptitude of them. Um, because we look for not necessarily the traditional uh, background, um, we've had a lot of success in networking happy hours or interview days, which is essentially speed dating for interviewing. Um, that way you have the luxury of looking at a lot of people that would not necessarily have made it through an HR screening um, with keywords for customer success. So how do we get people in and um, effective quickly? There's a two-week corporate boot camp that everyone goes through. This is very high level around everything you need to know in the organization. As part of that, we have about eight hours worth of hands-on, here are all of the tools that you need in order to be um, effective. At the end of that, we have what is a capstone presentation where the new hire will present back to the manager and then some other training people to say, this is what I learned to make sure their takeaways were solid. Um, we have an ongoing 30, 60, 90 day ramp plan with daily milestones of what they need to take away whenever they leave. Um, we have a mentor program, and that's pairing up the new customer success manager with a more experienced CSM. And then certifications on both the product and any other internal tools. And so there are a series of four certifications that they must go through to make sure that they've actually retained all the information that we've thrown at them in a very short period of time. So the results of this, um, we doubled our customer success team about quarterly while steadily increasing our, our performance over the last couple years. We were able to shorten the ramp time to when somebody comes in and is on the phone with customers um, within 30 days. And then we elevated the conversations quicker. Um, before, we did not have any strong takeaways. So somebody would come in, you'd say, here's your mentor, go and learn. Um, what we found is, depending on how good the mentor was, um, there was definitely a lot different as far as how effective that customer success manager was. So put a lot more structure and um, touch points in to where there were things that were actually testing the knowledge to make sure it was retained. So takeaways and lesson learned. Make sure that you have a strong profile and that you hire against that. Um, don't get so set on it has to have this specific type of experience. For us, it's somebody that is passionate about what we do. They have a heart of the customer. They're competitive. They have the ability to work on their own in an environment as a self-starter, but then also can come together in a team environment. Um, because we don't have necessarily the bandwidth to handhold everybody, it's important after 30 days, they are going to be a person that's just going to go hit the ground running and then raise their hand when they need help. Um, establish a solid mentorship program. And then I guess my biggest takeaway is to ensure that there are accountability check-ins to where you can actually measure um, what a customer success manager has been able to learn um, to make sure that it's not when it becomes a problem, but you're more proactive um, in helping them get the assistance that they need.